Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to go and show you a little bit of fun. As you can see, I had a lot of fun actually, using cactus juice to stabilize Matrix Opal. So I'll actually go through to how, how to get a good finish. But as you can see, I got a good finish and then I took it to the extreme and absolutely sacrificed this piece to science. But it's really good because it taught me a lot. I also did some uh, pretty funky experimentation. This one I'm still waiting on to see what the results are. But we'll go through all of it and you should have a really good understanding of what it's like. I've even gone pretty nerdy, but we won't focus on that too much. Let's get into it. Now, first things first, this is all part of the stabilization and treatment playlist on the YouTube channel. Feel free to check those out because I'm not gonna go through the entire process. This is the raw material. So this is some Winton Fairy Opal, very similar to Andamuka, a little bit more porous and ironstone based rather than the uh, Sansoni stuff from Andamuka. We then treat it. This is just done by sugar and heat. So soak in sugar solution, burn it up, comes out much darker. And then we go ahead and we do our stabilization slash coating slash treatment. People use many different terms for it. In this case, I used cactus juice. Now, before the Australians click off the video, it's not impossible to get cactus juice in Australia. In fact, there are now companies making cactus juice, an Australian cactus juice. So you can get it, you can play with it. It's typically designed for wood. And as you'll see, that'll come into the explanation for what I've done here. It is super interesting stuff. For the stabilization, it is incredibly effective, but you need a vacuum chamber and heat. So let me show you the process initially of how I got to this point. Well, a little bit before I got to this point. What you want to do is you want to start off by weighing out your cactus juice. So it comes in the two parts. Instead of showing them on camera, I'll just pop up a little picture because it's a little hard to show off these big bottles. So the cactus juice comes in two parts. You've got your liquid half and you've got your little powder. They call it an activator. I'm going to refer to it as an initiator in the future. And cactus juice is one of the least understood resins out there, I think, because I've heard everything from it was extracted from a cactus by Native Americans. But to be honest, everything I've found on it, it is actually not a natural product at all. Essentially, what it is, is much like our previous experimentation with the Paraloid. So the Paraloid is an acrylic resin. It's already pre-made into these little beads. What the cactus juice is, is basically the monomer of this and we end up creating our own acrylic. And I'll show you what I mean using the chemistry in just a minute. But the first stage is just mixing, basically, part A and part B. So first step, weigh out your liquid as I show on the scale. And then it's a one to 100 mix for this particular cactus juice. It can vary depending on what the initiator and monomer they're using is. So definitely be careful and double check your ratios before you do it. In my case, it's one to 100 to the liquid and let it dissolve. This process takes forever. The stuff does not want to dissolve. As you can see here, when you add it, initially it's just going to be floating around you can mix and mix and mix and it just won't disappear, but just let it sit. Let it sit for a day, let it sit longer if you need to. This one seemed to be fine after about six hours and then it's pretty much ready to go. Just give it one last little mix, drop your stone into it, and then we're gonna chuck it in the vacuum chamber and pump it down. So even this, when you do it, you're gonna see a huge amount of bubbles. Depending on how porous your material is, the bubbles are gonna be pretty, pretty aggressive. Make sure you've got enough room just in case you get any spillover, but this is a pretty solvent low kind of material. So you're not gonna get a huge amount of gas form and overflow your container. You'll just see it's basically fizzing away like a soft drink and eventually that's gonna stop. Now, don't be surprised if it takes more than an hour at a pretty low vacuum to be able to stop. This material is super porous. The more porous the material you have, the more it's gonna take to get in there. But the good news is if you're seeing that incredible amount of bubbling for an hour plus, you know it's getting in there. So once you've got it in there, much like when you're cooking opal, you're just gonna take it out, try not to let it drain too much, chuck it straight on a piece of foil, just aluminium foil, and wrap it up really tightly, and then you wanna chuck it into the oven. So once you've chucked it back into the oven, that's when the magic's gonna happen. That's when it's gonna start reacting. This stuff, as you can see here, I've got it still collected. This is my used portion. Even though the activator has been added, this could be shelf stable for a month, maybe longer. If you store it in a fridge, it will definitely last a lot longer. The key is the temperature. The temperature is what kicks this entire reaction off. And then you end up with basically the polymer form. Now, because I've been able to show it off on camera, I'm happy to give it a snap. Have a listen. Bam. Oh, I've been wanting to do that for a while. 
that is like glass. Though it's acrylic, it is uh, not like a soft plastic. It is super hard and sharp and yes, you can cut your fingers on this, at least in terms of its uh, physical properties. It is super brittle, it is super hard and it will just shatter. That was uh, super satisfying, but I probably should have wore gloves. Anyway, this is a piece that I just made into a little foil cup and I was going to extract it out, but it is rock solid and it will absolutely shatter if I do anything to try to get it out. So inside here, you can see there's no discoloration or anything, but there's a big puck of the cured cactus juice. But you can see here, it's a nice, uh, very nice glassy kind of resin pretty sharp so you got to be a little bit careful with all the bits that you want to take off at the end because you can put you could always do what i've done here and overkill it and then just grind this back because that is super thick if we have a look from the side it is uh real thick on that side much thinner on this side so this is more the result you get after you unwrap it now depending on the resin you use the temperature may be different and this is when i think i've got to get into a little a little bit of the chemistry now I haven't been able to get the SDS for the exact cactus juice that I got so I'm actually going to make a bit of a stab in the dark guess at what's happening here so based on a lot of the things I've read online the cactus juice seems to be a methacrylate of some sort so this is the monomer and what we want is to turn this into a really long chain by joining heaps together and to do that that's where we've got the initiator or the activator as they're calling it here I'm using BP or BPO, sometimes it's re referred to as. That's benzoyl peroxide. So benzoyl group here, peroxide is that little bond there. This little peroxide group is super weak. So that's when we chuck it in the heat and we turn this into something that has a free radical. So that's a free electron just chilling. It'll form two of these, it'll release CO2 gas, it's gone, and it will leave behind a phenyl radical. Now this is a free radical initiator in polymer chemistry. Pretty basic. And I'm changing it to a free radical initiator symbol here because I don't actually know if this is the initiator that I've used. I don't even know if this is the monomer. This is just an example of how I would do this. I could find out what it is that I used pretty easily, but I think there might be some legal issues around that because it could be a proprietary mix and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna avoid it. This is the most basic way to do it. A very common mix to form acrylic. So essentially what we've done by heating the solution, this monomer is not affected. This has split in half, turned into a free radical, and this is what gets the job done. So it is very stable at room temperature, but as soon as your initiator is formed, the reaction kicks off. So you've got to be careful of what this heat is. And you don't want to overshoot it too much, otherwise your reaction's going to go a bit crazy and it could go a bit wrong. But you want to keep it under whatever this heat requirement is. And then these two can just sit there and chill on a shelf together, mixed up, without reacting. Which is super cool because I can just keep reusing that cactus juice over and over again. Terrible name, cactus juice. Anyway, how does it get to the point of turning into a glass? So that's when the initiator reacts with the monomer and I've done a little, a bunch of little reaction mechanism half arrows here. That's just showing where each electron is going. Here we're basically forming a bond between the initiator and the monomer, because then you get that radical onto the monomer. And then that reacts once again exactly the same way as here, and then you end up with a chain of two together, no longer a monomer. And then we just keep adding and adding and we'll get a really long chain of these. They're not always going to be pointing in the same direction. Sometimes they'll be down because of sterics, but you get the idea. It's going to form a really long chain. And that really long chain is this. I'm not the biggest fan of polymer chemistry, but it is pretty fun to mess with. And it does work. So this is all inside the stone. So this stone started off at about 15 grams and it absolutely launched. Don't be surprised if you triple your weight of your stone. You're going to at least double it depending on how porous it is. If it's really not porous, like Andamooka, like a hard Andamooka, it might not grow that much, but if it's a porous Winton Fairy Opal like this, it is gonna go absolutely bonkers. It is uh, super heavy now. So it does soak up a lot of material and it does get in there and I can see why it's really good for wood, but there are drawbacks when it comes to stone, as you can see. So essentially, after I took it out of the foil, it looked a bit more like this, a little bit matte, it certainly got in there, it's certainly solidified. This little glossy part here is what you can see in the picture. 
So you can get a nice little finish like that. And all you need to do that is to just keep wrapping it in the foil and just keep baking it until you get a thin layer across the surface. What I then tried to do is I deposited a bunch more of the liquid on the surface, chucked it back in the oven and let it bake. But because of how thin it is and how slow the initiator works, it actually had time to heat up, get a little bit thinner, travel all around the stone and come out the bottom. And then it just sat in a puddle and created a bit of a mess. It does make the stone look a lot darker. You can see the opal color coming through. So it does work, but now I've got to go through and I've got to bring this all back to get to a reasonable finish again. The good news is just like with the previous stuff we did, acetone will just melt this. So it will re-dissolve back into acetone, which is why I'm 99% sure it's an acrylic. Jesus, I've got to be careful of that. But essentially all you really want, or at least what I like, is getting this kind of finish on it just here. And all just below the surface, you, if you have a look at the pores, they're actually very filled up. So it has worked as a stabilizer. It just won't give you that nice coating, which is why people use it in woodwork a lot. And a lot of the time they'll just make it so that they can work on the wood without it falling apart, and then they'll coat it in another super glue basically, and that will give it the gloss. They don't actually rely on this stuff to give it the gloss, even though it probably can be done. It's just such a pain. It's very much a strong penetrator, but once you try sealing the surface, as you can see, it can either get really thick or a bit too thin. If you made a mold that was really close, to the actual stone you could just get that thin layer but no matter what you're going to have to work it again and that's either through just dissolving with acetone or you can go ahead and you can start sanding all of this back which can work now another thing they say on the website where they're selling this is that you've got to avoid iron oxides and here i purposely mixed it with an iron oxide and they say that it will cause it to cure at room temperature so far i have seen no reaction at all so i'm not too sure which metal oxide they're worried about or why i can take a little bit of a guess and what i'm guessing is something like this so those fennel rings could actually with the right metal oxide form something like this so this is just if there was an iron species in the solution, this would be like iron two plus, it could actually start to create these ferrocenes. And this can happen with other transition metals. So this would actually start hindering the reaction, but I don't see how it would cause the curing to accelerate unless the metal itself acted as an initiator and started, started messing with things. So I don't know, I, it's a bit of a stab in the dark, but I'm trying, to wonder, I'm trying to work out why they say that as a warning on their website, because what we've got here in our Winton Fairy Opal is ironstone. And I was worried that the ironstone would cause it to set prematurely, but I've mixed pure iron oxide with it and it's so far not set. Pretty interesting stuff. I don't know, you could get this to work. You could get it to work and give you a finish like this, but a lot of the time you're gonna end up getting something like this and have to work it, which is not the worst thing in the world. You can see it does bring out the flashes. It, this is so thick that it's like a doublet. It's pretty comical because I tried a bunch of times to just keep coating and coating, which is why it got this bad. But all in all, it's 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 a fun little it's a fun little thing to use. I want to try to stabilize wood with it because there I could see it really doing well because it can penetrate and then the wood will just kind of soak it in. I went to 100 degrees for all of this just to make sure it really locked in. But whatever that heat for the initiator is, that's the only temperature you need to reach. So by all means, play around with it. Play around with the American version of the cactus juice as well. You can get the finish that you want. I'll go ahead and I'll finish this side and just cut all of this back and give it a buff to get a polish. Because as you can see, it does, it does have quite a shine and it does make the stone look much darker. It does give it that wet polished look. I just think it's a little bit tricky to get a to get right or you need to keep doing more work on it to thin it out and shine it up which i guess isn't the end of the world but 
a lot of other treatments, you can get a pretty good result first time, every time, and it's a bit more reliable. Pros and cons, you can try it out yourself, but I think cactus juice is much better for wood. It certainly does penetrate, and it certainly does stabilize the stone. It's much harder, and the treatment has definitely gone all the way through, making it really heavy, a little bit tricky, and handling this is actually incredibly dangerous because these edges are quite sharp and jagged. I actually think I've got some shards of it in my hands after doing those snaps. I should also mention, once you've got it in the foil and baked, if you find that it's stuck to the foil, just let it cool to room temperature and then it will just release itself. Don't panic and try to yank it off or anything. While it's hot, this is still a thermoplastic and so it's very grippy. Just let it cool all the way off and then just peel it, peel it off. You'll see that nothing gets left behind on the foil. It will very much stick to the rock. Anyway, it was worth a try. Good suggestions from people. I'm always willing to try it, but it's probably not the one for me. So on to the next one. Before I cut myself, I better put this down and I've got to work on another one, which I think will be the one. So I'll see you in that next video. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you very soon.